Four years ago, I launched my first ever YouTube channel. 37 videos, 2,000 hours of work, and three years later, the result was a complete flop. So I scrapped that project and launched a new channel one year ago. Our first video clocked in at over 140,000 views, and we recently broke 10,000 subscribers with less than 10 videos. See, I thought that the secret was a great idea. But what I discovered is that it's actually the ability to deliver your idea into the viewer's mind in an entertaining way. But don't take it from me, take it from the hundreds of comments that you guys post. That's why in today's video, I'll be teaching you how to master animation in Premiere Pro. So if you're a beginner, then you'll be learning all the basics of animation and how to do it like a professional. And if you're an expert, then you'll learn all the tricks that I use to create seamless engaging animations. So if you're ready to take your content to the next level, then let's dive straight in. First, let's go over the basics of animating in Premiere Pro. Let's take this for example. If I go over to my effect controls panel and change the position of my clip, my entire clip moves to the new position that I set. However, what if I wanted the clip to be on the left side at first and then move to the right? In that case, I would need to use keyframes. What a keyframe does is simply tell Premiere Pro that at 5 seconds my clip was on the left and at 10 seconds my clip became on the right. And Premiere Pro does the calculations and moves my clip from left to right starting at 5 seconds and ending at 10 seconds. And this will make a lot more sense if we just have an example in Premiere Pro. So let's go over to the 5 second mark on my clip over here. Then I'm gonna move the position to the left side. That way our clip starts on the left side of the screen. And then I'll place a keyframe for it by clicking this stopwatch icon right over here. You'll see a rhombus shape appear in this area. And this is our keyframe. And what it means is that at this point here, our position is this value. So if we go over to 10 seconds and move our position all the way to the right side, then another keyframe appears indicating that at this point, our position's on the right side. And if we watch this through, you'll see that our clip goes from the left side to the right side between five seconds and 10 seconds. And you can create keyframes for all these different variables in our effect controls panel, just by clicking the stopwatch icon over here. Now that we have a general understanding of what keyframes do, let's go over velocity. I'll drag in this small icon and keyframe it on the left side at 5 seconds and then have it move to the right at 10 seconds. And once again, this is what we end up with. You'll notice that it looks very robotic and not pleasing to the eye. That's because it's moving at a constant speed the entire time. By clicking this arrow here, we can view the velocity of our animation. And as you can see, it's a straight line, meaning it moves at the same speed the whole time. However, in real life, things speed up and slow down. A car doesn't hover at constant speed, instead it speeds up and slows down. So the secret to realism is this velocity vector right here. To do this, let's click on our left keyframe and drag in the slider just a tiny bit, and then click on our right keyframe and drag this slider in a bit to create this spike. What this means is we will have a build up and a slow down in our animation. And this is the result we get. We're only a few minutes in and your knowledge of animation is already way beyond what you need. Now that looks pretty good, but it still feels like it's missing something. That's because another aspect of realism is motion blur. When a car moves past you in real life, it doesn't just appear as a still image that's moving across. Instead, it gets blurred out as it speeds up. To get this effect on our animation, we'll have to remove the old keyframes and go up to the effects panel and search up for the transform effect and drag that onto our clip. And you'll notice our transform effect has variables like the position and scale and rotation. So all we'll have to do now is recreate that animation inside of our transform effect. So I'll keyframe the position on the left side and move forward a bit, keyframe it on the right side. Then I'll click this arrow here and create the spike in my animation. But the trick here is to go down to the shutter angle and increase that all the way up. The shutter angle is pretty much the amount of motion blur that's allowed on our animation. And if we actually hover over the peak, you'll notice that our image gets blurred out as it moves. Once we understand these three concepts of keyframes, velocity, and motion blur, we can now go on to learning the advanced stuff. Now real quick, if you're watching this and you feel like there's a lot more to video editing that you still don't know about, don't worry, I got you. Whether you're a beginner or someone with years of experience, you're gonna love this. This is the ultimate online video editing community. And when we made this, we had three goals in mind. Our first goal was to ensure that you learn everything there is to video editing. So you'll have access to 40 courses on the basics of Premiere Pro, advanced editing techniques, the basics of short form content, and three different editing styles. And once you've mastered Premiere Pro, you'll be ready to dive into my nine part course on how to edit my own videos. But it doesn't stop there. See, our next goal was to give you the resources that professional editors have access to, which is why you'll get the presets and plugins that I personally use. And just because you're watching this video, you'll be getting a preset pack of animations that I have personally made, and it's gonna include everything from movement all the way to 3D animations. You'll also get access to a YouTube growth course and weekly scheduled calls where you can ask your questions, get your editor viewed by me, and dive deeper into editing with our weekly lessons. And to top it all off, our final goal was to create a close community of like-minded successful editors where you can get your questions answered, get your videos reviewed, and meet other successful editors. And all of this comes together to form the ultimate pack for any video editors out there. So if this sounds interesting to you, 
allow me to invite you into a link down in the description below where you can watch a video that introduces you to my online video editing community. So if this sounds interesting to you, click the link down below and join Ultimate Editors today. One of the biggest mistakes I see beginners doing is having things just appear and disappear off screen. And the easiest way to fix this is by adding either movement animations or pop-in animations. Let me explain. Let's say you have a video of you talking and some stock footage appears to show what you're saying. Instead of having it abruptly appear, Hello there. drag in the transform effect on your stock footage, then place a keyframe at the beginning of your video and move your video to the bottom so that it's no longer visible. Then move forward a bit and move your video back to the center of the screen. Click this arrow and create the spike with your velocity. Then don't forget to increase your shutter angle and take a look at the difference. Not only can you apply this concept to stock footage, but also text. Now that you know how to animate movement, we can create some pretty wild text animation. Let's go! So instead of having your text just appear like this, you can drag in your transform effect and keyframe the scale variable to something like 50. Then move forward a bit and set it to 100. Once again, click on your arrow, select your second keyframe and create a velocity spike. Increase your shutter angle and this is what you end up with. And this is called a text pop-up animation. You can also have a text moving into screen by adding a keyframe to the position of the text at the beginning of our clip, then moving the text to the bottom of the screen, then moving forward a bit and centering the text back to the center of the screen. Once again, clicking on our arrow and creating our velocity spike and this is what you'll end up with. This is called a simple move from bottom animation. Creating zoom animations is a simple way to exaggerate a specific statement and maintain viewer engagement. Say I have this boring clip of me talking here. I'll drag in my transform Whoa. effect, keyframe the scale at 100, then move forward a bit and change the scale to something bigger. I typically go for 130. Then for a slow zoom in, just place the first keyframe at the beginning of the clip and the second keyframe at the end of the clip. And this is what you'll end up with. And if I flip both of these keyframes around, then I'll end up with a zoom out. And for a special oh effect, God. if you bring both keyframes yeah, a bit closer, then click on my arrow and create my velocity spike, then you can create this rapid zoom in effect that I really like. This immediately focuses your viewer's attention. And now if you've made it this far, then you're clearly interested in becoming a master at video. In that case, let me teach you how to do everything we just did with a simple drag and drop. To save any animation that you've created, let's just take this move from bottom animation that I just created. We'll click on our video layer, then go down to the transform effect and right click and click on save preset. Then give it a name. I'm going to call this move from bottom and click on OK. Then when we search up for it in our effects tab, all you got to do now is just drag and drop this onto any video in your timeline. And this is what you'll end up with, the same effect which we've created. By doing this, you could save the animations that you're creating and drag and drop them onto anything in your timeline. And to make things even better, I've made an animation preset pack where you can drag and drop all the effects that you've seen in today's video and much more on any video in your timeline. Say you need a zoom, just drag and drop and boom, you've got yourself a zoom in. Say you need a pop in effect, just drag and drop and boom, you've got a pop in effect. And you can find this animation preset pack down in the link below. But ladies and gentlemen, at the end of the day, you can't make an amazing animation without amazing sound. Design. So stay tuned for my new video on the ultimate guide to master sound design. Thanks a lot to all of you for watching. May God bless each and every single one of you. And if you enjoyed this video, then I think you enjoy one of these ones right here. So yeah, pick one and click on it and go ahead and watch it. I mean, I, uh, I think this one's actually pretty cool. And this one I actually worked a lot on. Hey.